In this video, we're going to show you how to replace the X-Drive gear plate. The tools that we'll need to change the X-Drive gear plate will be a drill, a number two Phillips head screwdriver bit, a 10 millimeter socket, and I'm going to use it in the drill, but you could also use it with a ratchet wrench. We're going to need a screwdriver as well, a hand screwdriver. We're going to obviously need the replacement plate, and then we're going to need some caulk, some silicone caulk to uh, seal it against dust once we're all done. So we're going to start by turning the machine off, unplugging the machine. We're going to make sure that the head is cranked almost all the way to the top. We're going to make sure that we've removed the vacuum bag because we're going to turn it on its back here. Take the machine, gently put it on its back so that we can remove the bottom panel. Bottom panel is simply 12 screws. Make a note on the panel that the louvers face in, so when you put the panel back in, you'll have it oriented correctly. We're going to also want to clean up the uh, sawdust inside the volume of the bottom. Once we have the bottom off and the uh, inside cleaned up, I'm going to turn it back over. I'm going to remove the two screws on the bottom of the right side panel. Change to our 10 millimeter socket. And remove the two bolts at the top. And there's a lock washer and a flat washer on these that you'll need to remove as well. I'm going to take the panel off. Be very uh, familiar with how this came apart. On some machines, there's two very thin washers that space up the, the panel. So if your machine has them, make sure you grab them and put them to the side and then replace them uh, when you go to put it back together. At this point, we have the side cover off. We're going to go ahead and clean it up a little bit so we don't get gear into the mechanism. So just take and blow off and clean off as much as you can. And we are going to be opening up the motor and the gear mechanism. Once we have it cleaned up, we're going to reach in and pull the cover off. The cover has two little snaps up at the bottom here and there. And so I like to kind of push on it from the side and then work it off. It has some uh, adhesive on the inside in a lot of cases, so sometimes it doesn't come right off, you kind of have to work it back and forth. And we're going to clean all this off, and then when we put it back together, we're going to reapply the ad adhesive to seal it. So at this point, we have access to the gears and to the motor. Now, your uh, machine may have two plates. The one we're putting back into the machine is a single drive plate, and it's got four screws, two on this end, one that's accessed through the big gear here, through the hole and then one on this side. If you have a two plate arrangement, you'll want to go to the single plate arrangement and the two plates will actually have five screws holding in uh, the two plates, so you'll have one extra screw. Once you have the cover off and it cleaned up, we're going to go ahead and take the uh, two plates off in this machine. There's actually a double drive plate, so there should be three screws to take the first one out. And each screw has a washer lock washer. The third one on this plate is going to be through the hole. We have 
line it up and slide it. So once we have the first three screws off, this right hand drive plate, we're going to also take the two screws off that hold the, the gear plate to the little drive motor. And you can see the drive motor by the pinion sticking through. So there's two little screws with silver lock washers that hold these on. I like to use a magnetic screwdriver because it's much easier to retain the screws. And then this little plate, once you get the three screws off, the three big screws to hold it to the base and the two that hold it to the motor, it comes right out. You can see as opposed to our single drive plate, it comes off in two pieces. We'll go ahead and remove Second, we call it stage two, sometimes referred to as stage, stage two. Again, it has two screws, and this one just pulls right out. In the case of our uh, uh, gear, bad gear, you can see right here that uh, we have some broken teeth. So we're going to replace those two gear plates with the single drive plate. First we're going to go ahead and go, come in here and clean it up a little bit. Make sure it's nice and clean before we put the new drive plate back in. Okay, now we have the gears removed and the area cleaned up. We're going to go ahead and start assembling the single drive plate back into the machine. Next we're going to want to move the machine off the edge of the table about three or four inches just enough so we can reach our hand up underneath, grab onto our motor here and thread it into the hole in the plate. You'll see once you do it that it takes a little bit of a fitting and fiddling to get it all to fit together. So we'll go ahead and grab the machine and move it off not too far just enough where we can reach underneath grab the motor. As you can see in my left hand I'm holding the motor and I can move the motor around which is going to be very important here in a second. Down here on the base there's a protrusion or a tab that sticks up. We're going to want the steel edge of the motor plate to fit behind that tab. So we're going to go ahead and stick it in place. You're going to get it roughly centered and I always like to line up our two holes here, our two screw holes, uh, so you have your left and right position roughly correct. You're going to take and thread the motor pinion through the hole and you're going to have to kind of tip out the plate like that, get the motor pinion through, and then you're going to have to just jockey it into position where that the boss on the motor comes through that big hole. As you can see the boss on the motor uh, is essentially the exact same size. So now without letting go of the motor I have the motor in, inserted into the plate and here's the tricky part. Now we have to get the gear on the back side of the second stage gear to mesh with our two metal gears of our belt trays. And this can take a little bit of time and a little bit of patience, but essentially we're going to push in on the whole set of gears while slightly rotating it such that it, it, uh, it uh, will change the mesh a little bit and get it to snap into place. Like I said, this can, can take a little bit of fidgeting, a little bit of time. You don't want to force it. And you'll know it pops right in place. And then this gear is essentially flush with this gear. So now that you have it in place, this the motor's not going to go any place. It's not going to fall out on you. So you can go ahead and grab your two motor screws the two small ones. Make sure that they have the little silver lock washer in place. And I like to look right through the hole, line it up, and then start the first one. Don't tighten it all the way down. Grab your second one. Again, line it up. Start your second one. Sometimes it takes a couple shots. OK, 
Okay, once you got them just barely tight, you're going to want to test the backlash in the gear system. So to do this, all we want to do is take our big gear that meshes with our pinion and spin it. And you should feel it, it fairly tight against this gear, meaning when you spin this one, this one spins at the same time. There's no slop in it. You can't rock it back and forth and feel the teeth uh, engage and disengage. That would be called slop or backlash in the gears. So ours is pretty tight and usually with the single uh, drive plate, because the holes are fixed, it's usually, uh, once you insert it, it's, it's correct right off the bat. So now you can see that there's no slop in there. We've got these tightened down, hand tighten them down, and now we're ready to go ahead and mount the plate. So again, there's four screws. I like to start the first screw in the upper right hand corner. Don't tighten it down. The next screw, I'll go all the way to the other side. Now I'm going to go ahead and probably turn the gear one full revolution. And I do this simply to center it between these two gears. So again, it can be uh, when you install it that this one may be shifted over slightly and engage this one a little bit more than this gear. But if you go ahead and spin it a full revolution, it kind of seats itself right into the middle and engages the two drive gears for the belts uh, equally. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these two down. Go ahead, insert and tighten the remaining two. Last one again, you have to line up through the hole in the gear and be careful that it's lined up. You don't want to be off and get the screw head onto the gear and stress the gear. You can see that it'll go right through that hole. Then after you're done, go ahead and I like to spin it around one entire rotation again, at least one rotation of this. Uh, and you can feel for high spots or, or stiff spots. In this case, ours moves very, very smoothly. You can move it both directions. And so we've, we've uh, correctly installed our new gear set. The last thing we want to do before we button it up, put the cover back on, is put a little bit of grease in our gear train. We don't need a lot. So you can see I'm just going to cover some. I like to uh, put it on all four of them here. Not a lot, just a little bit. And I like to rotate. Kind of 180 on this smaller gear here. Put a little bit more. And that's all you need. You don't need too much because if you do get dust then it is attracted to that grease. So that's all you need to do. The last step here with the gear uh, train is to go ahead and put our cover back on and you'll see when you take your cover off that it's got some sealant on it. Some of it's black, some of it's uh, clear. So we're going to want to go ahead and take some, in this case, some clear interior exterior silicone sealant and we're going to put a thin bead around where the uh, cover touches the base and or touches uh, the other structure. And that seals away the dust. We obviously don't want to get dust in here. Uh, and it obviously affects performance. So we're going to take this, and I like to start with a very thin bead at the top right corner here. And then once you get to the lower part, you're going to put it on the inside because there's a rib that goes all the way around here and will actually seal to that rib. You don't need to put too much, it just makes it messy. Now along the top, along this flat flange, 
go ahead and lay it on the face. The slightly tricky part is this wave-like portion. We're going to actually put it on the bottom edge. So it's kind of tricky. Just got to work it in. So as you can see, we've got it all along the face, the inside edge, where it needs it along the face and then the inside edge up here at the top. Now putting it in, I like to come from the inside. Just be careful, you see the little snaps here. So you line it up left to right, then the biggest thing is the, the flange on the inside which you can't see in this shot and it should fall straight into place. And I like to come back and just clean up as much as I can with my finger. Especially on the inside, it tends to have a little more excess. And at that point, we are totally buttoned up and we're ready to go ahead and put our side panel back on and our bottom panel back on. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and stick our panel back on. As you remember, uh, in this particular machine, we had some spacing washers that we need to remember to put back. We're going to stick our spacing wa washers back. And uh, so you just line this, the panel up, slide it down. Make sure that along the bottom you're on the inside of the tabs. Usually it'll fall into, into place. Take our 10 millimeter hex bolts, start them by and make sure we have our flat washer and our lock washer on it. Don't need a lot of torque on these bolts. Take our Phillips bit. two pan bottom panel screws in. And we're going to go ahead and flip it on its back. And assemble the bottom panel. Remember the orientation of your bottom panel, the louvers, which you can see here, you have louvers that stick in, they stick into the machine. And the way I have this oriented, the uh, centered set of louvers actually goes up and over the power supply. Do the four corners first because that panel can shift on you a little bit. Make sure it fits by screwing in the four corners. Flip it back over and we've completed replacing the X-Drive plate.